This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support the show. We have Play-To-Win deck boxes finally back in stock. Uh, also, don't forget, they're 3D printed. They have our logo on top. You can see your commander on both sides. And we have glow-in-the-dark ones now, too. I'm going to show you them in a better video now. Look at this shit. Look how cool this is. Well, welcome to the Play to Win podcast where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we got another top 10 that we're going to try to figure out here. I love these. Right. These are some of my favorite podcasts. We don't have the list set up. There is no top 10 as of now. We're going to make the list as we go. Exactly. No one's ever done a top 10 for this before. So this <laughs> is great. A very unique and original idea. Yes, exactly. So what we're going to talk about are the best utility lands in CEDH. Yeah, I feel like utility lands are... When, you, when I first got into CDH, I felt kind of like I, I love utility lands. And in CDH, there just aren't quite as many of them. Like, I love things that give weird effects that aren't really that great. But in, in CDH, you don't see them as much, but you do see some. They're just a little bit different than you would in casual. And it, to me, they're still my favorite part about any mana base. Like, those last one or two spots in the land slot where you can, like, I think I can add a little something fun here. One of my favorite cards in the decks normally. Yeah, it's a lot tougher in CDH because we play a lot fewer lands than yeah. maybe people in casual will think that we should right and having a land that doesn't help cast a spell is it sets you so far back dead in weight dead weight dead weight i in, could be in playing casual a, you can recover from that and cdh much more difficult I exactly think. i could be playing a card with much higher upside like mana crypt instead yeah, or a basic island right yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's define what a utility land is then because that's what we're gonna look for when we're talking about the best of these i feel like there are two different ways to look at utility lands for me and for us do you want do you want me to say it or do you want to say it? no you please go? okay so yeah. i I think a utility land is anything that doesn't just tap for one mana of a color. Anything outside of that, anything that does something extra than what just a regular land would do, that's a utility land. Now, I could see an argument that a utility land has to do something besides produce mana, like it has to do another action. I, I get that, but... There's just there's none of those in CDH that are good. So we're gonna talk about anything that that utility that first description yeah. that I said. Technically, <laughs> fetch lands would be like a sure. utility land that's but like that's... a mana fixer, but we're not gonna talk about that because that would easily be the number they're one. The number one. They're, yeah, they're, they're number the one. zero. They're the tier zero yeah. below number one. Ten fetch cards lands. that can basically find all five colors of mana. That's... Not only that, but they they can shuffle after brainstorm. They can shuffle bullets to Citadel. All they can do yada yada things that are ex excellent. The other thing that I would say makes it a utility land is if you would crop rotation for it. Hmm, Most of the time, you don't crop rotation for a I've, fetch land. I've crop rotated for a basic land if I see a blood moon or a back to basics okay. coming. Like, so th well, I that think is that utility. <laughs> That's utility. Yeah, and so I know that like people will crop rotation just to mana fix themselves. Oh, yeah. I'll too. do it for a command tower if I need to. That's not what I mean, though. Okay. I mean, like, like the good upsides you you like to think of them kind of as silver bullets almost silver bullet lands yeah, okay. yeah that's kind of what i think of okay. yeah so do you want to pop into the list let's here go. i got yeah, a bunch you, of cards yeah get, let's let's list them off to me and let's start ranking them all right so the first one is actually two cards it's okay. the basic land type givers urborg and yavamaya oh sure yeah, yeah those are decent i like them these are fine if you're in two colors yes i don't like them in three colors don't and there's really no strategy uh, unless What's the name of the five mana green creature that turns all your creatures into forest? Five mana green creature that turns all your creatures into forest? Or they, uh, they're oh, lands. Uh, 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 Ale Alesha. Alesha. Alela. Alesha. Alesha. Alesha, who smiles at death, is oh, a Margin yeah. creature. Alayla, yeah, is it? I'm pretty sure it's Alayla. Is this a CDH podcast? Like that. Do we know what the hell we're talking about? Alayla. I, yeah, <laughs> Alayla is the five mana green creature that turns all of your creatures into forests. Right? Or is it the, all, turns all your forests into creatures? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, but I don't know how to spell it. We gotta have... All right, hold on. I'll get, I, can, I can spell it. Let's go on the database. Is it Alesha? It's definitely not Alesha. Ashaya. Ashaya! Let's start this over like we knew what we were What the hell are we about. even talking about? I don't even know anymore. We were talking about... Ashaya. We were talking about Yavi Maya and shit. All right, hold on. None of you have our forests. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> great okay how do we feel about urborg and yavamaya yeah outside of two color decks looking to help maybe color fix you a little bit i don't really love these cards they have some cool niche value in casual decks i got a zombie deck where i'm playing uh the zombie that gives all of your zombies swamp walk oh that's pretty good right yeah, that's and urborg, pretty cool. i should know what that one is too but Either way, in CDH, there's not the Swamp Walk isn't really going to come up. It's not going to be relevant. All it's doing is fixing your mana. It's basically barely on this list as it is, 
But uh, yeah, these, these can be great in the Gitrog and, and Tatiova maybe if they want the green yeah. ones, stuff like that. Because it's not even like you play Cabal Coffers in a lot of CEDH nah, deck lists. Any. So Urbord doesn't really do a lot. And mostly Yavimaya just makes your Arbor Elf be able to untap any of your lands. Okay, sure. And that's not that great. So these will oh, be part- Or you can use Arbor Elf to turn your Gaia's Cradle into a forest and untap the Gaia's Cradle. That's really that's good. good. That's good. That is really that's a good, good thing yeah. that you can do if good you're in thing. mono green. Three or card combo. To make extra Gaia's Cradle to mana. Make six mana instead of yeah. three. But if you're playing all those decks anyway, which you might be in like a green elf ballish yeah. type of deck, that's something that can come up and pretty cool. But it probably pers- comes up quite a bit. Yeah. Probably comes up Definitely. quite a bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving on. Emergence Zone is this next one on the list. is something. I like this one a bit more. Yeah, I definitely do too. Just the ability to present wins on top of other people's wins yep. at instant speed is a phenomenal upside to have. Crop rotating for this one, we're going to talk about all of these lands as like great crop rotation targets. Oh, but yeah. this one, especially being able to crop rotation to find it and win on top of somebody else. I've also thought about um, Growth Spiral a little bit, an instant that you can put a land from your hand. Oh, I know. Play. You've thought about Growth Spiral yeah. a lot. Yeah, so you can put Emergence Zone in from your hand if it's not in your deck gross spiral is probably at two mana for that very niche ability is not normally worth it but if that effect ever came on a one mana effect just like put a land into play at instant speed i don't think that exists if it does i'd be much more interested it's nice that this ability comes on the land because i wouldn't normally play a card in my deck that's yeah. two mana to be able to play things at instant speed no well, I guess I would because Flash was like the best. Yeah, thing but that to was do. Just, that specific. That killed it also. <laughs> That's also true. There was yeah. just a card in the Lord of the Rings set actually that allows you to play spells uh, at Flash speed this turn. Yeah, for we two didn't even talk about card. that in the set review, and I think that was the card that was commented on the most that we didn't talk about. It's on screen right now. We both remember what the name is, but we're just not going to say. We just it don't for feel fun. like saying. Yeah, we, I just it. don't yeah. feel like saying. It yeah, is the reason I'm not gonna. But, but it's here on screen. But it's it, I haven't seen it very often. Maybe it came up once in a top 16 list but um if that's the case i feel like i'm being very generous saying that two so mana far. for the effect is too much i think quicken already exists quicken is only specific card types yes. uh, it's not everything um and I also replaces yeah, but itself that that it, to me that's just i don't know it's not enough to waste a whole card on but the land the land's a little bit different. It's uncounterable. Yeah. I, I just think as a, it can also help cast your spells. It's just more of a free include yeah. than designating a spell slot is. What happens with me when I'm building my decks is that I will get to 28 lands in my deck, and then I'll go, well, I need a 29th land, and Emergent Zone is like the best 29th land. Way too high. Because I Too all, many lands. Uh, tw- well, 23. <laughs> I guess it depends on the deck that you're building. (laughs) But for most of the decks that I build and the strategies that I go for, by the time I hit... 26 like that's all of my mana sources right. and then i have a little bit more flexibility couple, from yeah there. a couple of freebies yeah. uh, emergent zone is definitely one that sometimes i will see in a four or five color deck if it's specifically trying to do an emergent zone thing more often than not i like this in like three two and especially one colors if you're in one color i think it's free if you're in two colors it's very close to free three colors is where i think this starts to be kind of like this is going to be tricky to help cast all of the spells that I really want to, but that's okay um, if that's what you're trying to do. If you're running crop rotation, if you're running other ways to enhance it, I, I think it's worth it. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely better than Urborg and Yavamaya as well. Yeah. Way better. Way better. So we're going to move on to Homeward Path. This one basically lets you play around Gilded Drake. Yeah, it allows you to gain control of all creatures you control. All creatures that everybody controls go back to their right. owners. Yes. This one has particularly spanked me because I play against Tyler, who plays Perplexing Kinnon, and when you get a Perplexing Chimera out and you switch control of something, and then you could Homeward Path it right back again, that can be pretty close to a soft lock, especially when you introduce Seed Bormuse and other things like that. The card can be very good. The card is really good if in that situation with specifically Perplexing Chimera, and also if your meta is dominated by Gilded Drakes. If your commander is the commander that's always Drake, then you want to have this and you're in colors this card i don't particularly love in that situation gilded drake is not a card that i see much anymore and it's not a card that i want to designate a whole slot to play against if you're in a low color deck that plays around its commander way too much which i would argue is like a lot of low color decks it's probably very helpful if you can squeeze it in like it works in magda because magda doesn't need a ton of red sources sure, yeah so it's it's nice to have there but i wouldn't put this in every single deck just because someone could steal your commander right yeah it's better i think often to just have removal spells that you can kill your commander and cast it back that feels a lot worse but 
those are at least active when you use them when someone didn't guild a your commander. Whereas this is basically only active when someone guild a your commander. That's not even going to happen every couple All the of the time, games, right? right? Yeah. Like, so unless you're actively using it like a perplexing chimera deck or something like that would, I don't love this one as much. I have this below the basic land type givers. Uh, oh, the basic land type givers. I thought you meant like basic land. Like, yeah, way below oh, basic yeah. land. I would obviously <laughs> rather play a basic land. Yeah, I agree. This is better than... You have this below. Below, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I agree. This is worse than Urborg and Llanowar... Elves? No, the land. No, that's Yavamaya. Yavamaya. What's it called, though? Yavamaya... Uh, cradle of... Yavamaya Cradle of the Land of War? Cradle of Why don't I know any card names today? Yeah, we're doing we're doing great <laughs> on this front. Yeah, Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. No Land of War. Okay. No Either Land way, of War. Yeah. Homeward Path, worse than those. All right, here we go. Command Beacon. Stinky. Poopy. What does this card do again? Uh, gives something hexproof? Uh, no, it lets you put your commander from the command zone into your hand. Oh, okay. Goto likes this. Goto likes this. Mono Red, in general, likes if this. If you need to play around Drowneth Magistrate, then, yeah, this is a fine include. Then a thumb and a half up, I would a say. A thumb and a half up. I'd say this is close to Homeward Path because it's specifically good against... I would say it's it's better than Homeward Path, actually, because although this is specifically good against Dranith Magistrate, because you put it from your command zone into your hand, and then you can cast it from your hand, but also, if your commander's getting killed a whole bunch, and you don't want to spend eight mana to recast it, you can activate this to put in your hand and cast it normal. Maybe that could be worth yeah, it. Yeah, Magda's three mana instead of being, like, six or eight mana Do you play instead. this in Magda? I do play this in Interesting. Magda, yeah. So what are your thoughts on this card compared to Homeward Path? Oh, it's not great. It's better. It's better. better, than better. Be yeah, because Magda's going to die more than it's going to get stolen. Yes. Yeah. So it, That's a it great just, way to it's going it. to yeah. come up a lot more. Yeah. The advantage. So. Okay. So better. This is better than Homeward Path. Uh, the Orborg lands. I think it's still worse than the Orborg lands. Interesting. I agree. because I think that the mana fixing is more important once we start to get into higher color decks. Yeah. But higher color decks aren't playing these the the mana fixers lands. No, but I in a higher color deck I would rather play mm, okay. those mana fixer lands. I think then go to another colorless land. Uh, that's not Emergence Zone. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Emergence Zone kind of makes all the colorless producing lands that's worse thing, yeah. than they really are. I have one slot for them in right. any three plus color deck, maybe. I'm, yeah, I'm not playing more than one colorless producing land in a three color well, deck. Well, maybe, sure. maybe you'll play two because our next mm, section well, is one of the Ancient Tombs. Yeah, okay. Ancient Tombs is yeah, the next yeah. card on the list. <laughs> all right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, normally I have room for two, and it's would, yes. Ancient Tomb and it's Emergence Zone. Certainly. Ancient Tomb is worth to me more than one card. It, two mana is worth more than a card. It's effectively worth two cards. It's two lands. So it's weirdly card advantage if you think of it like that. I know it's not. It's man advantage. But um, yeah, Ancient Tomb is great. It's better than Emergence Zone. I think it's I one of the best lands we have access to. I just put it above Emergence Zone on the list yeah, too. It's, because... better. it's one of the best lands that we have access to. If your commander needs two pips, and even if it doesn't, your commander is going to get killed. Having the two extra pips to cast it is going to be helpful. It's just your command tax. Helps you play around Thalia. Helps you play around other taxing effects. It's a great card. It being in your opener is absolutely where you want it too because when you can just go that into Talisman on turn one, exactly. now you're set. Yes. And your turn two Ristic Study with Spell Pierce backup is ready to go then it also helps you with your free rocks if you can get a turn one risk study off of like ancient two mox diamond that can be like yes. a familiar play pattern great in Najila, great in three color commanders that your need four, one pip and two co colorless your four cmc commanders also love to see this because a lot of them are two pips and then a and then two colorless so. right exactly so yeah this um ancient doom is uh, it's just a great card we don't have to gush too much more about it it's been excellent no because honestly format that it's been legal in. it's an honestly incredible we're gonna gush more about the next card on the list which yeah. is great all guys Cradle. Yeah, Gaia's Cradle. They're on the list because at first I wasn't sure whether I wanted to put these in the utility land section yeah. because they did ramp you. Like All they do is produce mana. Yeah, they don't do something besides produce exactly. mana. Exactly. And a lot of the other utility lands we're talking about do something other than just produce mana. Yeah. But the advantage that you get off of them, like these are still the first, these are the reasons why. I kept the ring in from the last video. We can keep this one in two if you want. The whole reason why I play crop rotation is to go get Cradle and Ancient Tomb. Yes. So, like, they kind of define the utility land slot for me in yeah, particular. I agree. They are the silver bullets. They help you get way ahead. How many... Here's a question for you. How many creatures do you need to play in your Gaia's Cradle deck before you put Gaia's Cradle in? If I'm in green, Gaia's Cradle's in. <laughs> 
because like, wait, wait, what if you're in like a team or polymorph with the rock right thrasios uh, i feel like Gaia's cradles in rock because, still makes one mana. <laughs> yeah and then when when <laughs> thrasios is in play it's a free if, it, ancient if, tomb. if it makes me ancient tomb mana for no life okay beautiful so that's the minimum is uh one creature the minimum <laughs> in, in the whole deck <laughs> including your commanders like uh, it's, yeah okay yeah all right so if your commander was like a planeswalker and you played no creatures even though only planeswalker oh no i wouldn't play it there i guess I th but there is a planeswalker the five color um dragon thing it's like a five color planeswalker that you can play as your commander and it makes a three three great with guys cradle <laughs> It's amazing with Cradle. Yeah, I, I agree. This goes in, in basically any amount of creatures I'm putting Guy's Cradle in. There is some consideration. Sometimes on turn one, this won't make a mana. This won't be... If this is your only land in your opening hand, and you have a mana dork, but you can't use your Guy's Cradle to cast it, yeah, that's going to stink. There is a downside. But that doesn't happen very much. Normally, with the amount of lands that you're playing, you're going to have two lands in your starting hand. Hopefully, the other one is a fetch land or something that can cast the Guy's Cradle. And then immediately, your Guy's Cradle that can cast the creature, the mana dork or something, and then you can immediately use a guy's cradle to tap for at least one mana. For one mana, it's just a regular land, but it so quickly scales up and up and up, especially in green decks, card is busted. I, it's yeah. just, I, it just makes so much mana, especially with things like Thrasios. If you can jab, just tap for a single land, activate a Thrasios off of it. Oh, that's the best gets feeling ever. Head. Yeah, and it's like because this card is also in the same decks as all the mana dorks and right. Bloom Tender, right? So it's just really easy to stack creatures up. Very easy to have like three creatures in play. This can make three mana for one land drop. That's a rate that we do not see very yeah, many times. There's a reason why <laughs> this card costs over a thousand dollars right yeah. now. Although I think you can get copies for like five or six hundred bucks. You probably can. Yeah, yeah. they're like like damaged they're loved yeah not they're loved. damaged <laughs> they're loved right cards busted i think it's probably it's close to ancient tomb i don't think it's a snap much better than ancient tomb i think it is closer than that but I think so it's, i it's think better. it's decently better because there's decks the that rely on it as a win condition too That's true. like the revy decks can yes. have a meal blink the revy so you can make infinite green mana with use cradle. the use the Emil to flicker the Derevi, the flicker flicker the Derevi flickers the guy's cradle, the guy cradle taps for more than three mana. You can use some of that three mana to activate the uh unicorn to flicker the Derevi again, the yada yada yada. Although you don't even need the Derevi because the as a unicorn the it unicorn flickers a non land. The unicorn flickers, flickers a non land. -land. Right, right. Yeah. So as long as guy's cradle makes more than three mana, which it often will in a Derevi stacks deck, it's great. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, we're gonna move on though. We're gonna talk about the artifact lands. What are they? What are they called? They get ancient den in one of them. Yeah, ancient den is the white one. Um, there's ancient forest, ancient <laughs> swamp, and <laughs> ancient island. Yeah, these are lands that produce color of one one color type, and they're artifacts and they come in untapped. I don't think these are very good. I don't think these are very good either. Uh, there's very few decks that want them. Decks that want to turn on Mox Opal, and if you're in one color, maybe. I think Tyler plays it in Id Kinnon because does. it turns on his Mox Opal, which is he really busted. He plays Seed of the Cyanide. Which is the blue one, which yes. we knew, of And course. doesn't say Ancient in its name Not at all. at all. None of them do besides the Ancient, and I think. Yeah. Either way, I think these are... Pretty mediocre Medium. because the problem with them is yeah. that they get shut off by all of the artifact hate that's in the format. Exactly. So collector oof means that you can't tap them for mana like your lands should be able to. They so, also feed Dockside kind of like unnecessarily. That's also true. And that's also a pretty big downside. So I am going to end up thinking that they're pretty low on the list. I think they are worse than the Urborg and Yavimaya. How do you feel about them versus Command Beacon or Homeward Path? I don't think they do enough. Like they don't. They're just, like, their benefit is really just to turn Mox Opal on, right? I'd like, rather play Command Beacon or Homeward Path. I think so. Yeah, I think these put these uh, kind of at the bottom. They're way at the bottom. Then, yeah. Um, here's another land that deals with artifacts. It's Mycosynth Gardens. Oh, this is a new one. I haven't seen this one a ton. I haven't seen this one a ton, and I'm a little surprised that I haven't seen this a ton. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. I think this card's really good. Uh, making copies of stuff is just a powerful effect. Who Very doesn't versatile. want a second mana crypt if yeah. you can afford it? I think, um, yeah. I didn't I, mean monetarily. I meant, like, mana-wise. Sure, yeah. No, like, in-game, <laughs> yeah. who wants a second mana crypt? I think, though, it, it has the same problem, where, like, I only have a certain number of room for... Yeah these in more than two color decks right so do you I, want to go outside of ancient tomb emergent zone for this i mean this still does does this tap for a color mana or is it only taps for colors? no you can still make mana with it but only colorless mana 
Correct, yeah. I normally don't want, in a two-color deck, I think I, I could afford three colorless land slots. I'm sorry, it does filter. It filters. It filters as well. So for an extra mana, you can make the mana of one color. Okay, that's kind of helpful. That makes it a it's little bad. better. No, it's bad. It's, 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 it's not bad, good. But it's, it's better than just being able to tap for colorless. That is very correct. Yeah. Yes. But the effect is, is not great. Yeah. Um, I like this one a lot. I haven't seen it a ton, so it's going to fall a little bit low on the list for now. But I think the ceiling is high. I could definitely see this one being very good. Yeah, I agree. And I actually think that I would put it above Urborg and Yavamaya, but not above Emergent Zone for right now. Of course, I'm with you there. I think that maybe this has given it a little bit of leeway, especially because we haven't really seen this a ton. We haven't yeah. really seen this do a lot, but there's a lot of decks that are utilizing it. I've seen some Magdalus with it, and I've been thinking about Mm, playing it in magda yeah, too why not can't be bad right how many mountains do you need i not 15 maybe <laughs> yeah. so yeah <laughs> but yeah so that's definitely definitely a card that i think is worth thinking about more yep, I'm, than I'm maybe we yeah. have been i think i'm looking to find more excuses to play this card i think yeah i think so too okay Cavernous Souls is next. I, I have such ties to this card because when I started playing Magic and I saw Cavernous Souls was like, it, Absence Restored was like the first set that I was like really paying attention to, which is where Cavern came out. And it was like, this is my dream card. I can finally beat the Blue Decks. And I, I you know, it, the card is very good. In CDH, I think it's a little bit less good than its heydays of standard, like 10, yeah. 15 years ago, whatever it was. I, I've been seeing a lot more recently using it to have an uncounterable Grand Abolisher. Incredible. Oh, that's beautiful. Using yeah. it to have uh, an unkind of fast Oracle can still be fine. Um, ways to uncounterably make other things uncounterable is great. My only issue with it is creatures are pretty close to uncounterable as is right now. There's just not a ton of counter spells <laughs> that counter creatures. There's like force of will and maybe mana drain. Outside of that, not a lot of creature counters really exist. They're and all don't like even effects. say Stern Scolding yeah. because no one's going to be running that in a tournament. Now, you could argue that the format should see more creature counter spells. Maybe that's the case. That just isn't the case. So it, it, it is what it is for now. Exactly, yeah. So I still do like Cavern of Souls so can be in my very creature-heavy decks, but the second that Ad Nauseam is put in my list, I'm way off it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, 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 I'm really, if I'm heavy in stacks, if I'm heavy in one um, stack, like Winota is a perfect example of like, yeah. for Winota, it's kind of just free. Like getting an uncountable Winota can be really good because as soon as you get those triggers, you're good to go. Like, yeah. it, and Winota shares creature types with a lot of other cards in the deck as well as, well as other creature types overlap a decent amount. You know what else I'll say? If your commander is prone to being countered because it has Ward 3, <laughs> and yeah. I think that you might also want it in those scenarios too. Yeah, I wonder if Tivit, does Tivit play Counterspell or Cavern of Souls? Should it? I probably would think about it a little bit no, yeah normally if that tivit resolves it's it's difficult to get it off the field i would consider that too what about yeah. niv mizzet does niv mizzet play cavern souls which niv mizzet the big niv mizzet the, the one six that's the one that's just playing cdh sure the triple red triple blue technically there's also the food chain niv mizzet which I guess is not yeah. good but yeah, it's if, still yeah, it's, yeah sliver is just better sliver's just better yeah but no, yeah would you play it in niv mizzet like this you're mainly a spell slinger deck, which is why you're I mainly, don't want. No, because that... Niv it already can't be countered. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. it would... man, I'm dumb. All right, great, good call. <laughs> good thing I'm not a Niv Mizzet player. Yeah, because sorry, I'm... Shauna. <laughs> Okay, let's... that'd be funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so where do we want to put Cavern. this card that we're talking about, Cavern of Souls? Yeah, I love how you say this card that you're talking about because I, you forgot I for a second. Forget the card. <laughs> Worse than Emergent Zone. What's Worse under Emergent Zone? Microsynth Gardens. Better than Microsynth. Better than yeah. Microsynth Gardens. Better than Micro. Just this because is so it's so fucking easy. Yeah. <laughs> We're ace in this test. We are. Especially because we're the student and the teacher. Like, we're the ones graded at the end. We're like, yeah, we did right. Man, I would have done a lot better in school if yeah, this was If the I was the case. teacher also. Yeah, the whole time. Wow. Um, okay, yeah. Cavern of Souls is decent. Let's move on. Urza Saga. Ooh. Such a good card. I yeah. like it a lot. Yes, I would like to find my soul ring for free, please. Yes, I would like to find a pithy needle to fuck you over, please. Yes. yes, I would like to find my soul guide lantern to fuck you over, please. Urza Saga is a very good card. More often than not, this is my, if I can, my third or even second colorless land slot in most of my decks. This can be better than Emergent Stone in the right deck. A deck that is like a stacks deck. I'm, although you would think Emergent Stone. A non-red yeah. stacks deck. Yeah, the, 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 the 
it can do a lot of different things, especially if you're naturally playing other targets besides just Soul Ring in your deck. The threats that it makes can be really good. You can use them to help block. They can get pretty big in decks like Urza, where you're like all of a sudden you have a couple of seven sevens out. Yeah, definitely. You just have to watch out for the Blood Moon players at the table. Yes. Um, and you don't really like it when you don't have a lot of other stuff going on. It does sacrifice itself. If there's a collector oof out when you have to sacrifice your Urza Saga and you can't get your Soul Ring, that that's, can be bad. Yeah, that's not great. If the Blood Moon comes in, your Urza Saga is sacrificed right away. As soon as the yep. Blood Moon enters the battlefield, your Urza Saga is dead zo. Because of layers. Because and I think. Don't then bring up layers with Tyler not around because I'm not confident enough in about that. No, this is when you bring up layers. This is layers. Now this is, Blood Moon is definitely the layers thing. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah, okay. You're right. All right. So where do we want to put Urza Saga on the list then? I think Very it's better than... Zone. Yeah, I like, uh, do you think it's better than Cavern of Souls? Yes. Okay. Why do you think it's better than Cavern of Souls? It does more. Cavern of Souls just does the one thing. Sometimes that thing won't be relevant. Yeah, and then Sometimes. it fucks you over when you can't make the colors of mana that you need. And at least at least Urza Saga can go get you a Mox Diamond. If can, you Exactly. It's so flexible. Yeah. It can pres If you can give you up to two free bodies, not free, but like two bodies with just a land drop if you need that too it can search you for a whole library of different things um yeah i think it's better than cavern souls all right next on the list then i just put them all in one category channel lands oh okay this, this is, is tricky. tbs abc uh nbc channel and, like television is yeah that that okay, was, very good. yeah Beseju Adawara, very good very near good. the top so kenzen and takanuma near the bottom yes. garbage can a Django? Middle. Some, middle. Sometimes middle really good. Middle of the road, yeah. yeah. Sometimes really good. How do you want to... Do you want to separate them out that we have way? To, so I think, that because those three... Yeah, they're just, <clears throat> they're just so different. Let's start with the poopy ones. Takunuma and Sokenzin. They have their homes. Like, Sokenzin's great in Winota. And Takunuma is good Winota if you need to get back a creature from your graveyard. And, and you just monobac. happen to have it in your hand. Right. And four mana in play already. It, it's good if you're in mono black. Yeah, like you're already like it's just you're not going to be playing anything that cares about swamps and CDH because you're not going to hit enough lamb drops. Yeah. So you just want untapped producers that do other things sometimes. Great mono black. Outside of that, no dice. That being said, though, I am going to put them above command beacon and homeward path on the list because they tap for a color of mana that you need. So That's even huge. two color decks will still tend to play these because of the potential upside you can have yeah. if you get... If you can do anything with those bodies off of the Sokenzin, if you play Guy's Cradle, if you wouldn't want the Winota triggers, yeah. if you can do anything at all with having a couple extra triggers, if you're playing Jet Mirror, like I think it's considerable to just have it for free. I put them above Urborg and Yavamaya too. I, I agree. I think Sokenzin's better than the black one, Takanuma. Yeah. But yeah, I think they are better than the, the same lands. And then what about like Microsynth Gardens? They're worse than Mycosynth Gardens. Those two particular. But Ajango, I think, is like um, above Mycosynth Gardens, like very close to Cavern Souls, maybe? Yeah, I think Ajango's going to be above and still below Cavern of Souls, Yeah, though. but close. It, removal can be really good. It's limited, though. It can only hit attacking or blocking things. That Which is why sticks. I don't love it, yeah. No triggers have already happened. But it can be really good. And once someone dies has their commander die to an attacking and jango like once they're going to be afraid to attack you 100 percent. so now besaju and artawara to the top the way up now versus cradle i think besaju is close to cradle i i really do i don't think i think cradle's still better um but i think besaju is that's, might honestly that might not even be true besaju might just be better i think besaju is better i'm gonna after thinking about it for just a little bit yeah cradle can't get rid of a win condition through grand abolisher yeah yeah exactly <laughs> besaju does effects. stuff that no other card can do like, yeah it's just on a different level in what same has, thing with Ottawara. Yeah. like the, the people always think that they're safe and then you go hey i have my commander out so this costs one less and i can interrupt your win condition now especially if you're in partners it costs two less if you're playing other legends it can cost as little as one that's rare but it happens yeah. um yeah i think and we go besaju is the current number one followed by Ottawara. followed by guy's cradle ancient tomb yeah and then emergent stone urza saga cavern of souls ajango then uh mystic sanctuary then is the next card we're going to talk about Ooh, all right i think mystic sanctuary is a trap in cdh i, I do not think it's good oh admiral akbar tell me more about mystic sanctuary having three other islands plus this that means you're on your fourth land drop and they all have to be islands that's just that's really hard to do if you're in mono blue and you can use it to combo it's like, actually great like you can yeah. put intuition piles together with this yes if you're doing that specifically it can be fine but i think this has to not be counted as 
a land. Like it, anything that comes in tapped, for me, that you can't count that towards like what you consider your lands. So if you're playing like 28 lands and this is one of them, you're playing 27 lands. This does not count towards that. Um, I think it's really bad. Even when you get up to like two color decks, it can be really tricky. Um, and then three and higher, I would definitely not play it. There were times where I really wanted it in Urza. Like there are things that you do want to buy back. That is very nice. But again, I, it's a mono blue card only for I, me. I so rarely see it actually do its thing. More often than not, it's coming and tapped every time I see this card. So I I'm going to put it, like it as the bottom card on the list because I would rather play... An untapped Seat land. of the Synod yeah. in the Urza deck as opposed to Mystic Sanctuary. Fair. Yep, I'm into it. Yeah. All, All right. right. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Cephalid Coliseum. Cephalid Coliseum. This one used to see a lot more play, I think. Yeah, it did. I well, think especially it was, when Thassa's Oracle and Flash was, was like, like huge. Just, yeah. Yeah, that was based, that was the height of Cephalid Coliseum. One of your few ways to hopefully get rid of a Laboratory Maniac, that's the big issue because they need to draw the card. This one, it just mills them. So even with the Thoracle... No, they draw. Target player oh, draws I'm three so sorry. cards they and draw discards three. And three, discard cards. three. Yeah, you're right. So you're it totally doesn't right. work against Lab Man. It right. only works against Thassa's Oracle. That you are they empty so their right. library. Yeah. But the reason why nobody likes this anymore is because it's a. It only makes one color and it still pings you for one. Yeah. And you need to have threshold in order to activate that ability too. Yeah. So it's not like with the Thassa's Oracle on the stack, you can 100% of the time crop rotation and prevent them from winning right. the game. You also have to have like brain freeze yourself or some shit. Yeah, definitely. I like this one in Kess. I played it in Kess and I thought it was fine. Um, you want to fill your graveyard extra for Kess, and Kess also is filling their graveyard, so you're okay with hitting that threshold regularly. Has Tyler built a blue CEDH deck that doesn't play it? I don't think or so. Or do he we just play often. against Kinnon so much that yeah, I just I think, think he, that he every plays, one of his decks has yeah, it? Yeah, I think that's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. Um, I think the card is good. I think it's better than Mystic Sanctuary, um, yeah. but not by a ton. I think it's better than the Artifact Lands. Mm, yeah, I guess it's probably better. Because the, there's less of a downside. Yep. What about Homeward Path and Command Beacon? It's on par. We're on a similar level, but this one produces a blue. It's better than those. Okay, yeah. And then I'll put it underneath Urborg and Yavamaya in that case then, because they help fix your mana a little bit better. They don't cause you any kind of pain. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, but they don't do anything. Yavamaya does some things. We okay, talk about you're some right. Things yeah, that I think it's does. between Yavamaya and Urborg. Which I don't think is even going to come up in the top 10, so I'm going to worry about it when we get there then. Let's move on. Phyrexian Tower is I, the next one. I like this one too. This one's great. Being able to make two mana if you sacrifice a creature. Ancient Tomb is great. If you're playing Rograk, this one's great. If you're making any type of free tokens or extra creatures, this one's great. And it's nice that if you're not sacrificing a creature, you can still make mana. I love that you can sacrifice Protean Hulk to this for free. You can have oh, a yeah. sacrifice that look. That's awesome. Um, card's really awesome, but you need a reason to play it. You can't just throw it in your deck. You need to Correct. be doing something with Hulk. You need to be doing something with Rograk. You need to be doing something with something. You need a reason to play it. A reason to sacrifice your collector oof because right. you need an artifact to win there that. There you go. Sure. Yeah, you need some type of reason, whereas some of the ones near are closer to the top, like Ancient Tomb, I need it. I'm putting it in my deck because I'm playing magic cards. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to put Phyrexian Tower above above Takanuma and Sakenzin then? Big time. And what about versus Mycosynth Gardens? Big time. And then versus Ajango? I think it's a below Ajango. Hmm. Because I feel like Close. white decks could just play Ajango and like not hate it. Like it's a yeah. really good 30th land, Ajango. I, I could play Phyrexian Tower in three color decks. I'm much more afraid to play Ajango in three if color I decks. If I want to sacrifice things. Because if I don't want to sacrifice things, I'm much less interested in Phyrexian Tower. Like if I'm playing a black stack stack i don't want phyrexian tower i want my creatures in play yep i think it's, it's for the fast stacks it's for fast stacks that have rog rack or like other one drop creatures you can sacrifice that you won't miss i think that since cdh is a format where being aggressive is more often favorable to being defensive i think phyrexian tower is better for that reason because this helps you where a jungle stops your opponents and i'd rather help myself than stop my opponents huh but i think it's they're like on the same level Okay, well, what about versus Cavern of Souls? Is Cavern higher than a Jango right we now? We have Cavern one slot higher than a Jango. I don't know about that. 
Okay, so you should you want you, a Django what, how higher? How do you feel? I feel like maybe Cavern and Django should be swept. I kind of like that Cavern can add the mana that it needs you to when it's in your hand. You know what? Four color decks like Blue Farm, best deck in the format, play Cavern or Souls. And they yeah. don't play a Django, so I don't think anyway. I mm-hmm. wouldn't play a Django. If okay. I'm playing Cavern or Souls, I don't have room for a Django. Right, yeah. Think. So Cavern is better. Uh, this is maybe worse than Cavern then. So close still, this uh, area is, I feel, very close. This is a very... This is a gray area of the list here. I'm Uncounterable okay putting... helps you in a more way than two mana would help you, I think. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you also have to minus a creature. Card disadvantage, not good. Card disadvantage. Cavern's better. Okay, yeah. So we'll go Ajango, then Phyrexian Tower, and then Cavern Souls. I love how we had to like go down to like Caveman Brain. We did, yeah. Card disadvantage, bad. Bad, okay. <laughs> Uncounterable. We should have just started there. Yeah. Okay, Blast Zone, yeah. bad. Move on. <laughs> Is that the next one we're talking about? Blast Zone, yeah. I I like this one, actually. I think this one's great. I think great is a strong one. You know what? Okay, let me back up. I'm taking it from the perspective of my casual AC deck, in which that, in that deck... Bust it. It's great. You can just buy lands back from your graveyard in that deck. And you can just keep on replaying it, destroy everything. Love it in that deck. The problem with this card is that it's so expensive. Everything to do with this is expensive. It's It's very slow. Yes, it's expensive and slow to put counters on it. It's expensive to blow up the things that you want to blow up. And by that time... You already have other things in play that you're also blowing up too. So it's this weird semi-wrath that can never get rid of tokens if the problem is treasures. Yes. So you're kind of in a weird spot with Blast Zone, I think. I would say one good thing about this is it comes in untapped, and it feels like a land that would normally come in tapped. For that reason, I think it's great. I think it's close in parallel over to a Jango, but I think it's worse than a Jango. They're both removing stuff. A Jango's ability to do it and also produce colored mana makes it a little better. So I have the card underneath that above... uh, uh, Above, which is Microsynth Gardens. I think uh, Microsynth Gardens is better than Blast Zone. I... I think we would consistently see yes. Microsynth Gardens in decks much more frequently than, Bella, than the, Blast Zone. I think the amount that Microsynth helps you is much more than the amount that Blast Zone helps the opponents. Now, I will say if you're... F- it, it's all meta dependent, right? If your meta is dominated by Graft Digger's Cage, this can get rid of Graft Digger's Cage, right? If it has one CMC, yes. Which is what it comes in as. Um, so if you're, and your deck is really weak to Graft Digger's Cage, something like that, and you're playing crop rotation and you check off all these other boxes and there's a, 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 punch, a bunch of good reasons to play this one, I think it's great. But besides that, not so much. I think the boxes that you need for Microsynth Lattice to check off are fewer. Yeah. The problem with the example you just gave, though, is that, like, Besage you also really helps you in that scenario too. Yeah, so, there's way better. So like options. you're you're already playing slots in your land mana base that right. can get you out of those scenarios. What if you're not so, playing green though? So, I you need a way. Then you can't crop rotation for right. it. What if you're in <laughs> What if you're in mono black and you have no way to get rid of rest in peace besides your one feed the okay. swarm and you want to yeah, be able to bump this up fine. to two and then get rid of the uh, okay, rest in peace. Okay, yeah, I think it's good there. But then I would say that Sokenzin and Takanuma are better than Blast Zone then too, because then this is Takanuma Numa seen playing like two color decks as mm-hmm. well, whereas Blast Zone still probably only seen playing mm-hmm. one color black decks that need to get rid of yeah. rest in pieces. You're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I think Blast Zone's below there. So then what about Blast Zone versus Orborg and Yavamaya? I think it's better only because what it does is unique enough that it can be it has a higher ceiling than those cards. So you're rating this card a lot higher than I would. Why would I'm, you I'm, I'm being like courteous and like kind of like going through all these other cards that you, you think, think it's way lower higher of. I think it's worse than Command Beacon, but better than homeward path i think okay i could see a reason for wanting to you need you need to be wanting to play around one specific card yeah. so I, I could see how it's in that category the other problem is that this also doesn't make color mana and the other two colorless lands that we've talked about that only make one colorless mana but also have other upside yeah also come into play untapped and i think command beacon is slightly more value for a lot less mana especially if your commander is relatively cheap i i agree i i concede you're correct so i i personally would put it underneath command beacon but above homeward path which means that it's below urborg yavamaya and cephalid coliseum that's fine. I can be okay with that. You can just put Orborg in just because you're in two color and why not? You have to have a really good reason to put Blaststone in, so I, I get that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Inventor's Fair. Ooh. I'm going to say this into the microphone. Yeah. Inventor's Fair. This one can be good. This one can be good, too. If you're in a very heavy artifact synergy-based deck, 
this card's great. If you are looking to be toolboxy and you want your crop rotation to help you find an artifact, this can do that. Something that I didn't realize the first couple of times, or maybe the first time that I played this card and then someone pointed out to me, is that you need Metalcraft to do it. Yeah. You need to have three it artifacts. Sucks. It's a reason why they should just like, even if it's not predominantly in the set, they should reprint this card to say Metalcraft. I would. It. I wish it had a little italics thing that said Metalcraft. You may do this ability or something. Yes, Metalcraft exactly. should be at the front because the first thing I read is search for an artifact. Yes, great. The I don't last. Care <laughs> by the time I get to activate this, only if you control three or more artifacts. I already, I'm in my library. I I've found it. Stopped reading the card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, exactly. oh shit. Yeah. Who finishes reading the ability before you start resolving I, the ability? I want the costs up front of the set. I want the, what I have to, have to do yes. in the beginning. All requirements should be up at the front. It's like if sacrifice this, which I'm pretty sure is part of the cost, is that's up there. Right. So if I, if I'm required to have a certain number of things in play, I agree. That metal should be, up, should at be up at the top right after. The yeah, right up at the top. So Besides, I don't fault yeah. anyone if you fuck up playing this card. <laughs> also, this one can help uh, gain you a life each upkeep if you have metal. Which nobody right? remembers. Nobody <laughs> remembers. Nobody cares about it. It's never relevant. Yeah. This card is... It, it can't find any artifact, yes? It can find any artifact, yeah. So, like, if you need to find Isochron Scepter, if you need to find literally any artifact that you're going to combo with an LED or something like that, yep. so long as you have Metalcraft and, like, you're set up for this, this is a good card to have. If you're in a deck that's playing upwards of, like... 20 to 25 or higher artifacts. So Metalcraft is always on. I like this there. If one of your combo pieces is an artifact, I like this there. If you have the option to go find your artifact combo piece or an important piece of reaction slash stacks piece that's an artifact, I love this card there. But yeah. it's got to do like both of those things. It's got to be flexible. Yeah. If you're just playing like Ice Grind Scepter or this could find Mana Crypt, I don't like it there. Bad. Bad. Yeah, Not good. Bad. But if you're looking for... Grafdigger's Cage or now Spellbomb or something that, you know, can also be a flexible artifact slot. I like yeah. this card a lot there. I feel like the mono colors that aren't green kind of like it for that reason because yeah. a lot of times they're relying more on artifacts for their mana and that kind of gives you a, uh, a lot of other combo pieces that are artifacts that easily accessible yeah. Yeah, and it's a so. tutor that you don't have to cast a spell for that's like important like, that's also true yeah. we say this about all these utility lands but that's like an important part of all of them is that like they're effectively uncounterable they just happen no one can respond to a land drop you can respond to the activation you can do other things you can obviously respond with an opposition agent sure but. yeah but it's just more difficult to interact with than other stuff yeah which is why they're good. So where do we want to put Inventor's Fair then? Uh, I, I kind of think it's going to be by the other colorless lands that we've been talking the about. Homer and Path that's, stuff. And that's I think it's at the top the of the Homer Path stuff. I, above Command Beacon? Yeah, I think yeah. you're probably right about that. I think it's. I think what it does is even these Urborgs, man. I, these ha I'm having a hard time comparing the Urborgs to the other things. Do you think this is better than Urborg? Yeah, Will the mile? Urborgs see play in like three color decks consistently? Do they? Well, in some three color some, decks consistently, yeah. yeah, I see a lot of decks that run them. Okay, Man, I just don't play them a ton, I guess. But I tend to not play them a ton. I I tend to stay away from them. But I, I also don't play Inventor's Fair like a ton. They, <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about this. I that's all right. True, I also don't play Inventor's yeah. Fair a lot. But how often does Urborg and Yavamaya give your opponents advantage instead of you? Rarely, very rarely. I feel like every every answer I have to that question is going to be a confirmation bias situation. Yeah. I because I true. always make a joke when I'm not playing in those colors. Yeah. What's the joke? Oh, that's really helpful to me. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. It's funny. Yeah, it's sarcasm, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I just their impact to me isn't a ton. The impact of Inventors Fair can be quite high. We should move Urborg and Yavamaya down on this list a little bit. Below what? Never mind. Let's just put Inventors Fair above them and then move on. Let's just put Inventors Fair above them. It's a powerful card. It can help you. If it can help you find more than one option, I think it's extremely powerful. Tutors and lands are great. Wonderful. Moving on. Strip Mine and Wasteland. <sighs> I wish they were better. They're unfortunately, I think Strip Mine. Wasteland, I don't think is playable unless you need a second Strip Mine. Strip, Man is, Strip Mine is fine sometimes if you're playing maybe the Gitrog Monster or like Tatiovo or yeah. a Lands Matter deck that's doing landsy stuff. But honestly, these are below Mystic Sanctuary. Such its me. card disadvantage. If it got rid of th a land from each of your opponents, sign me up. I think that's great. Um, but it's not the tempo advantage that you would get in 1v1, right? Like, if you're on the play and you can... 
hit a Delver Secrets and then strip mine. Like, yeah, you're gonna. It's really good. Wasteland is the more common yeah. thing, but it exists. But then, in, like, when you have another, when you have another opponent, then that's gonna go land three mana rocks into Crom on turn one. Right. Like, you're like, oh, you're I, and now, like, I have no lands now. <laughs> right. So yeah, I think this one. I agree. Below. Yeah, we're at the bottom. Although I love the card in casual. I love the cards, both of them as cards. Yeah. CDH. They unfortunately, I don't think Fuck they em. shine. Fuck them. Horizon Canopy Lands. Remember this cycle from the remember. Modern Horizons? Love them in two color, hate them outside of that. This I is actually right our last with, one, by uh, the way. This is the card, last card? Last, last section of cards here, yeah. I think it's the same as Yamamaya <laughs> and Urborg. <laughs> I think you. Um, I think in two color decks you throw them right in for no other reason than they're they're a great two color land. See, I see them in some three color land. Some decks three too. color, you can play one, maybe two. But uh, they're the not my ones, favorite. They're not my favorite. So for me, when them. I'm building a mana base, like I go for fetch lands, and then the lands you can fetch with fetch, fetch lands that are good, like the shocks and the actual dual lands, and then the battle bond lands are immediately what's coming after that. Yep. And then I'm going with the five color lands that you play in every single deck, like Exotic Orchard and Mana Confluence. And yep, all I'm those normally lands. not dipping outside of those. I agree. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. No Orchard. No, no Orchard. Forbidden Orchard. No Forbidden Orchard. Fuck Forbidden Orchard. I yeah. hate Forbidden Orchard. I, I like hate it. Forbidden Orchard. You don't Orchard. like it. Okay. No, I, I don't want to give a, a black deck a creature to sacrifice to die. Bob Content. I don't want to give a green deck a creature to give them Gaia's Cradle mana. It's, every color has a downside for me somewhere. Yeah, I would say like the pro is you can like help players be able to block Timnas and stuff like that. But more often than not, I low think. Low pro. Yeah. Very low pro. I think what you, you do have instead, to remember that. Right. And nobody does. Yeah. And then you who says they're going to block it right and they can also they're just more likely to use the token in their favor before the block ever happens or something like oh great i'll calling the week this token tap this other mana and add nauseam now and you're like yeah Fuck! like During no combat. I, I just wanted you to block the timna not do all that <laughs> anything that has the potential to give me a downside i don't want to play in my deck we've been talking about this a lot recently like yeah. even removing things like final fortune like although the ceiling is high anything that can fuck me over bad yeah i don't want there's so many good cards i don't need to waste my time playing cards that can fuck me over like, yeah there's so many good ones that don't fuck me over yeah if i can't guarantee that i'm gonna get a win out of this yeah. then there's no right no reason just to give away free advantage yeah i agree um but these these cards i think they're on par with the yavamai and the urborgs maybe a little bit better actually because they produce two colors of mana and then one damage is in a, in a ton but i don't think they're much higher than that so you would you wouldn't put them above so Kenzin and Takanuma? Just kidding. Yes, I would. Okay. Yeah, I would too. Um, what about them versus Mycosynth Gardens? Just kidding. Higher than that. Okay. Versus Ajango? I'd put Ajango in my deck before, in my white deck, before I put like Silent Clearing in my deck. Yeah, you're right. In a two-color deck, I want the removal land more than I want an extra draw. Which means that these are worse than Phyrexian Tower, Cavern of Souls, or Urza Saga. This all still sounds I think right. I agree. Yeah, I yeah think there's I agree. no it's way that they're better than Emergence Zone. Not even close. Not even close. So what's our top 10? Do we have one? Okay, yeah. Do you want to see if I did this right this time? Absolutely. Start okay. at number 10, I think, right? Yeah, number 10. Okay, give it to me. So our number 10 are the Horizon Canopy lands, nice. actually. So we, end, we ended with the number 10. Drawing is good. Yes, exactly. Um, we didn't even talk about that and what they do. <laughs> they draw a card. They draw that a makes card. them good. <laughs> yes, exactly. When they're dead, you, they can draw your card. Um, a Django. Seed Django. of the Empire is our number nine. Free removal on land. Not free, but uncountable, basically. Exactly. Phyrexian Tower is the number 10. Nope. Is the number eight land. Extra mana. Sacrificing things can be good for free. The number seven land is Cavern of Souls. Uncountable. Very powerful. Yes, definitely. The number six land is Urza Saga. Yes, it can make bodies. It can find stuff. It's a good tutor land. It's better than the bad tutor land, the artifact one we were just talking about. Our number five is Emergence Zone. Stuff it. You can win on top of other people. That's what we're doing with this card. You have a Thoracal. Mine's going on top. The number four is Ancient Tutor. Ancient Tomb. Two mana. Two mana is good. Two life. Who cares? Two mana is worth it. And then our number three is Gaia's Cradle. One of the best lands in all of Magic's history forever and always. Number two land is Otto Wara. Bounces stuff. It's good. <laughs> Uncounterably. Uncounterably. And then the best tech land, utility land in CEDH is Peseju. I agree. Definitely. I give this uh, top 10 an A+. Again, another top 10 that is undisputably correct from Play to Win. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Stormageddon, Cool Bean Man, Luke Cook, Young Mox, AJ Alwosebi, Demon of Rosgris, Kowaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Big thank you to Dragon Shield for supporting the show. Make sure you go check out the store at the affiliate link down below. If you want to check us out on social, you can do that on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and listening. See you next time. <clears throat> the $50 patrons. Lutri's Dad. Stashes. Mitchell Shepard. Justin. Man Solo. Nicola Marikovic. Steven Shalikti. Big TP15. That Green Guy. Pedro. Jacob Depp. Michael Blue. Jan Wildfang. Thomas Bueno. Swampy McGee. David Nelson. Jormax. Has this ever happened to you? Oh man, I need to get ready to play magic at my friend's house because I lost power, so we can't play here, but I don't know where my deck is. Well now, thanks to Play to Win, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Introducing the new Play to Win deck box. It's glow in the dark. Nice. Look at this shit. Look how cool this is. <laughs>